Good morning and welcome to Freedom Forest. It is a beautiful morning here. It's just starting to warm up. The birds are singing. It's the 1st of May today and I am about to have a really good sort out in my Barassica net house. It's been a bit neglected over the last few months, just left to its own devices. Even though it has been producing really good food for us um, throughout the winter and the hungry gap, we've been getting lots of kale and um, the kale stems, the flower stems is something we've been really enjoying this year. Um, just before the flowers open, we've just been picking them off and using them like purple sprouting broccoli. And that's given us a really, really great additional food source for this time of year. We've got some spring cabbages, which are almost ready in there. But I have also now got lots of seedlings that are ready to plant out and need to get their roots down in the dirt. So I'm going to start today by having a good clear up in there, just picking up all the bits and pieces that have been left around, taking out all of the old plants, which are, are done now. And then I've got a lot of compost, which I'm going to be layering down on top to give everything a really good boost for this growing season. And then finally, I'll get all my new plants in. As sad as it is, my first job is to go along and pull out all of these kales, which have done us so well since probably about the summer last year. And normally I would just snip them right off at the base and leave the roots in the ground to rot down. Um, but because we have to have this plastic membrane down at the minute to control the weed situation over here, um, it means I'm going to be planting back into the same holes, the same area. So I am actually going to have to pull them all right out. Um, we're hoping this weed membrane will only be down probably in this area for one more season. So just hopefully this year. And then hopefully next season I'll be able to um, take this up and manage just with the layering of the compost and then probably with a wood chip mulch on top as well. So I just go along and get all of these out now and there's still probably a few edible leaves left on a lot of these plants and some of the flowers so I will have a pick over them later on and just get out the best of what's left and take it home for dinner tonight no doubt. So that's this side sorted out. This was the easier side to do because pretty much everything in this row um, was spent except one spring cabbage, but I have decided to sacrifice that one a little bit early um, for the sake of ease of sorting this side out and new plantings. This side is going to be a little bit more complicated because um, there's a few of the kales which are still doing really well and our perennial kales at either end, which we do want to keep going in here. So what I'm going to do first is pull this side of the black pl plastic back to the pathway, lay the compost down on this side, and then I'll probably call Dan in for reinforcements, get him to help me smooth the um, weed mat back into place on this side. And then I think what we're gonna have to do is make some cuts um, in the membrane so that we can lift it on this side, either around the plants or so we can pull it back around the plants. And then we'll work on um, this side as well. So you can probably see now um, a bit of a better idea of uh, the kind of weeds that we're dealing with in this area and why we have to use the weed mat. So we've got loads and loads of bracken, which is just absolutely ferocious stuff. And then also in this area, we've got a lot of stinging nettles as well. Um, so I'm just gonna go and have a quick weed over this area now, and then I'll get the compost down. Loads and loads of stinging nettle roots down this end, but hopefully where there is already a good 
layer of compost in here, I will be able to just lift some of them out quite easily, as you can see. And just by doing this again this year, will hopefully weaken um, their future growth. And that's not to say, I'm not saying that stinging nettles are bad, they do have their place and they are very useful for many, many things, including making some super food tonics up for your plants. But in here, when I'm trying to utilize this growing space to maximize um, the production of the brassicas, it's not necessarily the ideal place for them to grow. We do have them going wild in other areas at the land as well. And we're really happy for them to be there like that. Now, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but what is really interesting and gives me a lot of hope that I'll be able to get this plastic out of the way as soon as possible is that here on the path where we've actually d did a layer of wood chip as well when we first set this up um, there's a lot less bracken coming through now obviously this is going to be being trampled down the most um, but yeah the wood chip that having that extra layer of wood chip seems to really help suppress the bracken so hopefully next year if I can get the plastic off and get a good layer of wood chip down that will make the weeds and the bracken manageable in here. So fingers crossed. Okay, let's see how far this lot goes then. three more bags and I think that will be good for this side. Just got to make sure the door still opens. Perfect. So now we'll put the weed membrane back and we'll do exactly the same on the other side. So I am sacrificing a few of the weaker plants in here, but it is just to make space for the new stuff that's coming in and to make sure we can give this a really good freshen up with compost as well, just to make it as simple as possible. I will utilise as many of these leaves as possible. I'll take a big bag home with me tonight once I sort them all out in a bit. Okay, so we're going to do this side a little bit differently with the compost so we can preserve these bigger um, kales and cabbages that I've got left in here. We're just going to pull the weed membrane back. I've got Dan in here helping me now and we're going to sort of feed the compost in underneath and get it all around the plants and then pull the weed membrane back that way. Dan said earlier he'd get under here to do this if he has to. I think it'll be quite fun to see him do that. Get under there, it's no problem. Okay, 
that down there, my girl. And what you might notice seeing us moving around in here, you might have heard us say it before if you've watched other videos of ours, but we're not actually worried about walking on the compost because um, it doesn't compact. So you can just walk over it and move around and yet yeah, it doesn't have the normal compaction like uh, regular soil would. Anyway, we've just got a little bit of a shower coming so I'm gonna have to stop the filming for a few seconds, pop the camera somewhere safe and then we'll get back to you in a minute. We've just had a much needed heavy shower here. You might be able to see my hair is a bit wet from running in and out trying to um, get all of our stuff into the polytunnel. Uh, yeah, it's just really, really chucked it down. Fortunately now it has eased, um, so you can actually hear me in the polytunnel because when it rains, uh, not even that heavy in here, it sounds so loud against the plastic. Um, but yeah, it's just eased off. But what I'm gonna do for a few minutes now is pick over all of these brassicas that I've just pulled out from the net house and just pull off as many of the good leaves as I can save for us for eating over the next few days. So this one is actually a spent and over sprout plant. This was from my Brussels sprouts. But these leaves, these little leaves, are really nice and sweet still and I actually use these smaller leaves a lot in salads. Mm. Yeah nice. I've got two plastic containers here I'll do one box with the smaller leaves um, for yeah for salads and I will do one box with any bigger leaves for cooking with. And these kale plants, they have really been, they have been brilliant. Um, well, last year and this year, um, because not only have they produced a round of big leaves um, since the season started for spring, uh, when they started flowering, We've been, yeah, really enjoying eating all these little flower stems like this, either cooked or raw in salads. And then when they've gone a bit too far over, then they've just been producing these small leaves. And again, they're really, really nice just thrown in with your salads. And as I'm sure many of you will know, kale is so amazingly nutritious. It is actually a superfood. It's... Um, really high in antioxidants, it's high in vitamin A, vitamin B6, vitamin C, and I think vitamin K as well. It's known to be good for anti-cancer fighting and also good for your heart. So kale is an all round winner in our books. And we really literally, we, we probably eat it twice a day, some days, like, raw in a salad and then cooked for dinner or two salads. I just, honestly, if there was one plant that I could grow to feed myself greens as much of the year as possible, it would definitely be a kale plant. Time for planting. So the weed mat's back down really nice and tight, um, so really happy with how this has gone back down, which is brilliant. 
Um, now it's on to the fun part, which is putting the plants in. I've got red acre cabbage and I've got some greyhound cabbage as well. And I plant the cabbages at the back where I've got the rows, the holes a little bit closer together because um, the cabbages don't obviously need quite as much space as some of the big kale plants or broccolis or cauliflowers which I plant at the front and I've almost double spaced those ones. So yeah, I'll get the red cabbage in first and we'll work our way up. It's lovely having really nice deep compost to work with there. Because I do like to get the brassicas in really nice and deep as well as high up their neck as, as you can because that will help to stabilize them and give them deeper roots as well okay nice plug there we've got a couple of extra plants on there so i'll just gently pull off the smaller ones and i might well replant some of these in a minute give them a chance the strongest one I'll get him first. Oh, it's so nice having the compost so deep and loose. Honestly, it's such a pleasure to work with no dig in this way. If you haven't tried it, you really should. That's all the red acre cabbage in. Um, now I've got a few greyhound cabbage to pop in, hopefully just down the back here, and then we'll move on to the kale and broccoli and cauliflower. And just in case you're um, wondering, or if you're new to planting brassicas and kale and cabbage and all things like that, we, um, we plant most of our um, brassicas in here to protect from the cabbage butterflies because come sort of mid-summer, um, unless you're in an area which doesn't have many of them, you will find that all of your brassica plants will get completely stripped if you don't have them well protected with some kind of butterfly net. So yeah, so that's why we built the net house mainly, was to protect against the butterflies and also the pigeons. We get a lot of pigeons and blackbirds um, on our crops here and they just love the young leaves of the kale as well, not surprisingly. Um, so we do plant the majority of our crops in here to make sure that we get a good harvest for us and in the future hopefully to sell some once we've got things really established. But we do also plant them around the property as well. Like I have in my, what I call my wild veggie bed, I just sprinkle seeds and I let things self seed. Um, and I have some really good thousand headed kale that grows up there. Um, I find actually a lot of things do grow better when they've self seeded and when they come when they're ready. And my kale, yeah, that did that up there was brilliant this year. In fact, at this end of the season through the winter, and into the early spring, we've had a great harvest from, um, from my wild bed. So we do have it and we dot some plants around in the food forest as well. So the birds get their fill and we get what we need as well. Snow crown collie next. So I'll finish planting these now and then we'll move on to the curly kale and the broccoli. And last but certainly my favourite out of all of today's planting is the curly kale. This is just a dwarf variety so it does stay quite small. Um, but yeah, kale is still out of all of the Barassica family kale, curly kale and the cavallo nero kale, the black palm tree kale. I think they're my two favourites overall.
So that's all the plants in for today. Um, one other thing I just want to talk to you quickly about is how I protect these plants from mice. Now, even though this net house is largely sealed, we have had the occasional mouse getting in here. So what I actually do when I first planted out the seedlings is put a plastic bottle over the top to protect the seedling whilst it gets established. What we've found is once they're established um, and they're growing on strongly, the mice leave them alone. So I'm just going to pop a load of these on. I'm going to have a good sweep up in the polytunnel now, um, get all the dead leaves out, and then I'm going to get out of here quick because we've got another shower. So I need to stop recording and get moving, get finished in here and get undercover. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Please like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Oh, like any of the videos that you see that you enjoy of ours and catch us again soon. Thanks for watching. Peace and plants.